Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another YouTube video. And I, yes, I'm saying welcome back because it's actually been uh, a bit too long in my in my opinion since I've actually posted an actual video. So thank you guys for being patient. Uh, I greatly appreciate that, and I hope you continue to um, look out for any new content coming from this channel. But in the meantime, now that the, that boring stuff is over, um. I've got, I've got a bit of an opinion, I don't know what you would call it, but it, it's not really a theory, but it's something, and it's something a little bit weird with Dungeons and Dragons. Don't get me wrong, I love Dungeons and Dragons, but this is a little bit too weird, in my opinion. It's just something a bit, a little bit too on the nose. So today we'll be jumping into how all the frogs in Dungeons and Dragons are evil. So let's start out with the obvious thing, the frog. Also, the giant frog and the giant toad. Now, all of those things are unaligned, meaning that they are essentially not good or evil. They're just like, you know, they're wild creatures. They don't have to check and p pick a side. They don't quite have the intelligence to quite pick a side. And uh, they don't have the intelligence to do, like, you know, quite process things the same way a human would. Or a humanoid would, that is. Um, well, I'd care to, I care to disagree, because not only... No, they're not. Well, they're not evil, but if you come across a giant frog or a giant toad, they're probably going to try to attack you. You know, they're wild creatures. They're probably going to try to defend themselves, so the, the DM will probably pit you, uh, them up against you. So, yeah. And the frog is... It's useless. It doesn't do anything, I'm afraid. Noth nothing against frogs. They're very nice. They're very nice in real life. But in Dungeons & Dragons... They, they don't do nothing. So, however, when it, it starts to get a little bit darker, when it gets into the humanoid frogs and newts and salamanders, etc., amphibians in general. So, the first one is that you'll probably run across is, of course, the Bullywug. Now, I actually have nothing against the Bullywug, but the Bullywug, as you could have guessed, is evil. It's an you know it's an evil frog. It's uh, it's not like that clarified that it's absolutely malicious in every regard. That it's like a soulless monster. But you know, it's a fairly greedy and annoying and you know probably a bit evil race of frog. And I've got nothing wrong with that for because it really continues the story and allows gives the dungeon master some options when they choose like enemies. For instance, the players are in a swamp. What kind of nasty goon can the uh, can the dungeon master throw in to try to steal something or attack them or you know annoy them in any way? Well, there you go. The bullywug is there and available. So th that's fine. That's simple. I like it. I've got nothing against them. They're a good swamp monster. But, it starts to get a little bit darker when we head into Volo's Guide to Monsters, the next mo the other monster manual that is not quite as n well known or quite as expansive as the normal monster manual we all know and love. But, so, but it does have a, quite a lot of evil frogs of all things. So the first one you'll come across is the Fire Newt. Now let's, let's talk about the Fire Newt for a bit. The Fire Newt is... It's kind of like this orange, large, it's, well, I mean, it's not large, it's a medium-sized, uh, orange salamander-like creature. That's a humanoid. It can, it can fight for itself. It chews the special variety of herb that allows it to breathe fire, which is a pretty cool. And they live in geysers, and they're, mm, geysers, and I have the immunity to fire, and, you know, like to be in, like, m nice, moist geyser-like areas to keep themselves warm. Cool, I like it. It's a great idea. However, the Dungeon and Dragons team seems to go out of their way to make sure that you know how evil these things are. So, so let let me just quote here for a second. And this isn't even all of it, but quote: Fire Newt society and culture are based around the worship of uh, of Imex, the Prince of Evil Fire. The veneration of Imex leads Fire Newts to be aggressive, wrathful, and cruel. Fire Newt warriors of IMAX teach them uh, teach that by demonstrating these qualities. A Fire Newt warrior in combat can become touched by the Fire Lord and enter a nearly unstoppable battle rage. Well then, that you know sounds like uh, sounds like a very pleasant race, and not only is that just a little bit extreme to, uh, for an evil race, but it even goes on to say things about pillaging weak villages 
and sacrificing innocence to that fire god of destruction. Now, not even goblins get that ba a bad of a reputation. They just they just run around to be annoying. But these things, the Dungeon and Dragons team seems to go completely out of their way to tell you these things have absolutely no shred of good in them. And you will have to fight them if you come across them. In fact, there's even a quote at the very top saying, "'Tis always a fight to the death for them, so tis is one for ye." Now, is th if that's if th that seems almost a, too, a bit too on the nose, and that's not even the only monstrous frog in the Volo's Guide to Monsters. No, yeah, no, it's not the only one. Allow me to introduce you to the wonders of the frog hemoth, which you can find, like, literally basically on the next page after the flail snail. So, now essentially the frog hemoth is a giant big kind of aberration monster. It's size huge, so it's very large, and it's it has four tentacles, an enormous tongue, and several kind of eye stock things protruding from its noggin. It will naturally attack you on sight, and it has an intelligence of, wait for it, a whopping two. So no, it's not very smart. The two is out of twenty. So it may not be smart enough to be evil, but it will attack you. And not only that, but it but its backstory and lore also warp and distort any kind of shred of good that you can find in the other race of amphibian creatures, the bullywugs. As it is said that it is revered by the bullywugs, and the bullywugs will sacrifice livestock and also innocence into the Froghemoth's massive moth, believing that the Froghemoth is actually a god and is here to save them. Well, that's a bit... That's also a bit much, but that's not even the worst of all uh, that Volo's God has to offer for the frog and the amphibian races. Allow me to introduce you to the Grung. Yes, these things. How are these evil, you say? Look at their eyes. Look at their adorable little uh, slimy skin. Look at, they've got little weapons and spears and stuff. They look adorable. Well, yes, but no. I'm afraid that I'm going to have to crush your souls one more time with the grung because, quote, under the, un under a description called, uh, literally uh, called slavers, Quote, Grungs are always on the lookout for creatures that they can capture and enslave. Grungs are, uh, use slaves for all manner of menial tasks, but mostly they just like bossing them around. Slaves are fed mildly poisoned food to keep them lethargic and compliant. A creature aff afflicted in this way over a long period of time becomes a shell of its former self and can be restored only by powerful magic. I'm sorry, what, what, these, these things, these things do this? I, no, 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 okay, they, but because this is the most heartbreaking thing ever, because not only do you see the picture and immediately think, oh, that's adorable, you also read through things, uh, things like, you know, it's got all of these varieties of cool traits as well, like the, the casts and colors, they have, they dye themselves different colors to represent different ranks. That's cool, that's really cool. They've got poisonous skin that allows them to poison the arrows to fight things. That's amazing. They're depend, uh, they need water to survive. That's pretty cool as well. And they even have a king, which, the gold grung, that is terrific. But, and not only just, it's not only just one thing, but there's also the grung elite warrior and the grung wildling with their own stats and stuff. Super cool. Well, no, they are slavers, and they are evil, and they have no shred of good in them, and the D&D team will not stop until you know this. And don't think, that this for one minute, that this is just frogs, either. If you take a look at, say, maybe, how about lizards and uh, reptiles? You know, reptiles, would you think they would get a bad rap, because they, you know, they are actually kind of terrifying, stereotypically. Like the UN Thai race, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the UN Thai race of weird um, snake people is terrifying and is evil. But they also have the lizard folk, which are neutral and completely fine, and the turtle. Yes, the turtle, which is the most adorable and innocent race that D&D basically has to offer. Like, that's their whole thing. They are completely innocent and mean no harm to anyone. There, You cannot really find an evil turtle out there. So, what do they have against frogs? 
Yeah, not a single good frog in the entirety of D&D, and today I'm campaigning for that to change. I think that we should have one good race, one, at least one, so hashtag one good frog. Because it's about time we get a nice race of amphibian creatures that isn't going to attack things, or enslave people, or sacrifice them to fire gods. So... I've actually included it in the link dis uh, in the description down below if you want to go see it. I've also include included my own created race stats for the Fire Newt. Do with that what you will. You can be evil, an evil character with that. That's fine. But I've, I also like the idea of maybe there's a different clan of Grung that oppose the idea of enslaving people and are actually um, like commune with nature and like use the powers of magic to uh, to protect people and nature and things like that that would be a great idea and, or maybe or maybe some some kind of like clan of bullywugs that do the same thing like something like that would really redeem the uh, the frogs and things like that of this of the D&D uh, &D universe so yeah that's about it i think we need some good frogs and if you agree with me, and if you've got your own ideas, then please leave them in the description down below. And in the meantime, g spread the word and support the cause. We need we need good frogs here. So hashtag one good frog, and send that to whoever possible, really, and and just confuse people with that. So have fun with that. So leave a like, subscribe. My name is Average Bulb, and I am signing off. Hashtag one good frog.